ladies and gentlemen. Imagine, if you will, that the year is 1814, and this nation is at war. You are on board a ship sailing towards the enemy fleet. That same enemy that just burnt your nation's capital to the ground. Your mission is to win the release of a prisoner of war, a respected physician, and your friend. You board the British flagship, and after intense negotiations, they agree to release your friend. However, you all remain captive because the battle is about to take place. On the morning of 13 September 1814, the British fleet began a bombardment against your homeland, the likes of which have never been seen before. Rockets after rockets, cannonball after cannonball. For 25 hours they pound on. But through the night, you're able to look toward the shore and you can still see the stars and stripes flying in the breeze. And in the morning, the bombardment ends and there is silence. And as the sun comes up over the horizon, you're able to look toward the shore and you can see that the troops of Fort McHenry have raised an American flag that is so large and so grand that each of its 15 stars and stripes measure two feet across. A flag that is so magnificent, it cries out, this is the United States of America and we will never surrender. You are so moved by this show of guts and resolve, you write the following song. Your name is Francis Scott Key. Gymnasts, this, this is your national anthem. Thank you, Dan. I wanted to play that because things have changed now since the national anthem was first written. Now the year is 2015 and our nation is at war. The sad thing here though is our nation is at war with everybody. We're at war with ISIS. We're at war with Al Qaeda. We're at war with the United States of America, which is really sad. I don't know if you heard the news this week, but the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, something isn't going right, go to the Supreme Court because they're what America is all about, right? Okay, let me read a little something to you here. The Supreme Court has refused to review a case concerning a California school official's banning of students from wearing the American flag t-shirts for fear of the garments are being disruptive. The American flag is disruptive? Really, Supreme Court? The Supreme Court's decision was, taking, was taken behind closed doors. No explanation was given as to why the case of Dario versus Morgan Hill Unified School District, but they will not take further action. The case stems from an incident in 2010 when students were ordered, ordered, students were ordered to remove U.S. flag t-shirts on the Mexican National Day of Cinco de Mayo. 
school officials cited concerns that such displays of patriotism, listen to this now folks, such displays of patriotism would inflame racial tensions. Really? I look around and I think that we are still in the United States of America. Four students were suspended and sent home and a blanket ban was enacted, much to the chagrin of free speech proponents. Those critics say that the Supreme Court's decision to let stand the Ninth Circuit Court ruling restricting free speech, in this case affirms a troubling precedent that displays of patriotism in America can be prohibited. How does this work? We're in the United States of America, Cinco de Mayo. The, say what you want, I'm on cable access and I can say what I want. One, because of my right of free speech and two, it's cable access and I can say what I want. Nothing I say here is racial, but I'm just gonna spit it out. This is our country. If Mexicans wanna come to this country and we grant them a day of Cinco de Mayo, that's something that we as America granted them and said, hey, you want to have Cinco de Mayo? It's a holiday for a beer company, basically, all right? But we can't wear an American flag. Back in 2010, if you remember right, they took the American flag off of the flagpole and they raised the Mexican flag and then they put the American flag up underneath it. And if I remember correctly, they put it up upside down, which is a distress signal, okay? We're in the United States. The American flag takes a back seat to nobody. To nobody. I just came from breakfast with 17 veterans. These guys fought, and even though they joined me for breakfast, some of these guys died over in Afghanistan, in Iraq. They gave all they had. They wrote the check to the United States of America and they came back. Are they still up, breathing, living, heartbeat, walking around? Yes, they are. But a lot of these guys, they're not living anymore. They went and they went to defend our country. Our country, which the American flag is a symbol of. These guys got blown up over there. I just had breakfast with guys who can't see. Guys who lost legs. Guys who will never walk right again. Guys that have PTSD. Guys that, that sometimes they can't sleep, they wake up with raging nightmares at night, they can't sleep during the day, they can't sleep at night, some of them can't hold a job, they can't work because going to war to defend this country got them so screwed up so bad. And the United States Supreme Court says that our flag is disruptive, disruptive? They get paid in American money, they wave an American flag over the courthouse only because they have to. I'm sure that's some type of a law. But if they have a problem with the United States so much, screw it. Why don't they get out of here? All right? a back, the American flag shouldn't take a back seat to anybody. All right? We have David Hill got killed in the line of action. Our own Jonathan Roberge got blown up in the Middle of East, in the Middle East. He got blown up over there. Right? And we display American flags all over the great city of Lemesta here. And the United States Supreme Court says that our flags are disruptive. Really? Go back and look and see who, the, who appointed these people. So reading on further, if the Supreme Court continues down this road to political correctness, that eventually everything we say will be treated as threatening as a loaded gun and deemed just as dangerous. And that's what they're doing. They're taking away gun rights, they wanna take away, all right? It'll be a cold day in hell when you take away my American flag. I have flags all over my property. It'll be a cold day in hell when somebody takes away my American flag or when somebody takes away my guns. I ain't giving up either one of them. The Ninth Circuit Court concluded that a heckler's veto, that theory, that could be applied to the case, essentially allowing the government to restrict free speech to maintain order. While the court acknowledged that other students were wearing Mexican flag colors and symbols were within their right to do so, it simultaneously ruled that the American flag apparel could be prohibited, despite the fact that no breakdown in order had occurred. So it's okay for the Mexican to come to school wearing his Cinco de Mayo, wearing his Mexican flag, wearing his donkey with a, with a bandana, whatever the hell he wants to wear. But you can wear that in the United States of America, and you can say, Viva Mexico, 
this is Mexico. This is the same country that held the Marine captive down there because he trespassed into their country by mistake, and they held the Marine captive, and our president didn't want to go after them. Finally, the Marine got released. This is the same country. Now, we're saying, no problem. Mexico, we love you. We love you, Mexico. Americans, screw. We don't care about you. You can't say it. It'll be a cold day in hell when somebody challenges my patriotism, somebody challenges my Americanism. Go ahead. You want to try to take down my flag, circuit court, or Supreme Court? It'll be a cold day in hell. And they have free speech, but I don't. I was born at the University Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm an American citizen. I don't have a right to free speech. Hey, Jeff, why don't we just kill all the cameras now because we don't have a right to free speech? Why don't we just take down everything off the, unless it's political, why don't we just get rid of everything? That's what the Supreme Court is saying. No, I hear you, Mike. I hear you. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs when uh, we can't raise our own flag proudly and, and uh, remember what it's all about. Mm. Tell the 17 veterans that, that I just had breakfast with this morning, that were willing to die for this country that went over there and fought for this country. Tell that to Jimmy Lanciani, one of our own city councilors who waves that flag every day. Go ahead, tell him, sorry Jimmy, it's free speech, you can't fly a flag anymore. But go ahead, put up a bandana, that's okay. All right, that's how we wanted to start off. That's why I wanted to play our national anthem at the beginning of this show. I called Dan Clark and he said, I'd love to have you play that national anthem at the beginning of our show. I might play that all the time. Ugh. So give us a call if you have any thoughts, if you have any ideas, if you want to challenge it, if you think that we shouldn't play the national anthem. But here, we'll always play it. And all the veterans that joined us today, I thank you very much for your service. Welcome home. It was a great time. It was a great breakfast that we had over there. And uh, we want to thank, uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even thank our sponsors, but I want to thank our newest sponsor, which is Donahue Limousine Service. And uh, we kind of got right into it, and I forgot about a few people, but Donahue Limousine Service, we have more sponsors coming more and more on board every day. Donahue Limousine, Shan Cakes, Monachusett Vending, um, Computers Down Under, Wildwood Farm, and of course, the always lovely Tracy over at Edward Jones Investments. I'm actually contractually obligated to say that, otherwise I don't get dinner when I go home. So uh, we have a lot more else that we're going to talk about. We're going to tie this in also with free speech on words that I can say, or I can't say, but other people can say. Um, and hopefully when I get home, hopefully my American flags are still flying at my house and nobody's come to take them down. Uh, we had Officer John Moynihan of the Boston Police Department uh, last week was shot in the face. Um, again, I guess it was, I don't know whether it was an act of racism or not because it was a white cop that got shot by a black guy in Dorchester. Uh, oh yeah, he didn't have his gun drawn. He was just approaching a vehicle and a guy got out of the car, just shot him point blank in the face. And the really ironic part is the guy that shot him He'd been arrested before for, um, oh yeah, shooting a cop before. But he got released before. Good move. Oh, that was another move by the courts. That's what happens. We're going to have, um, Jack Selly is going to be joining us in a moment. And we're going to talk a little bit about the things going on in Dorchester. We're going to talk about free speech. Uh, we're going to talk about the war that is going on here or whatever it is. Maybe I'm not using the right term of it. But where racial tensions now, we were doing so good for so long. And now everything is just going down the tubes. And I don't know whether it's because of Barry in the White House. With a, I don't know why everybody's going crazy. Me, I don't see color and I deal with people all the time. And they're of all different colors. Black, white, Puerto Ricans, Chinese, Asian, everything. Pink, blue, we deal with Smurfs, everything. But you got people that just want to keep up, keep on coming and stuffing it in your face. I'm black, you got to give me this. I'm black, you got to give me this. I'm black, you got to give me this. Politically correct or not, I don't really care. I'm not giving you a thing if you don't deserve it, period. I don't care what color you are, all right? And I don't think you deserve a thing, no matter what, no matter what color you are. 
If you deserve something, you should work for it. If you want, want something, work for it. Period. No question about it. So I think we're going to take a quick break. Um, is Jack ready in the green room? Jack is ready in the green yep, room. We sure are. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back. We're going to get Jack here. We're going to get him wired up in more ways than one. All right, we'll be right back. Ooh. Hi. <laughs> it was complete and utter chaos. I'm different. <laughs> we need more we need coffee. Fire! Yeah, coffee is. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's very hot. Are you staying warm? Now you're a lot younger than I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're, a, you're a lot younger. Yeah. Mm. Than I am. No, uh, I. You are too. Get out of here. But anyway, <laughs> silence. And I mean, you can. Guys okay? <laughs> you want to keep playing the clip or do you want to go shut up? Hey, if you guys get any bad jokes, today's a good day to. Today's a good day to Sam because she'll laugh at anything. Well, I mean, till death do us part, or I get sick of you. Is that what you say? <laughs> or what I you can't say? deal with your crap anymore. Uh, right. That girl's pants were so tight it was almost yeah. impossible for her to get in them. Andy Warhol. Who's Warhol? Warhol. <laughs> you think about it. He just complained. Can't wait time. for a piece of turkey when I get home. I'm gonna hire a lady to come in and thread my face. Ask me who I am, and I will tell you. Okay, pal. Wow. You know who I'm talking. Oh my god. <laughs> you see that? I can't fish <laughs> without a license. So, orange. Orange. Was there a cause with orange or a puce or um... How about chartreuse? Oh, if I want to say something to you, I'm going to say it, right? You. Me? No, you. I'm saying to you. If I ever smell, just tell me. Okay. I know if I have like something hanging off of my nose, I'd rather have somebody yeah. just say, you get something hanging out of your nose. Then you have to have a guy like Andy Warhol who's, <laughs> who's saying, let's do this. It's going to sell for millions of dollars. <laughs> Okay. Is there hypocrisy here somewhere? Are these <laughs> people everywhere. wacky? Oh. Get any ideas about corn and cows? It's okay. sheep now, Matt. Yeah, gotta watch it. Yeah. If there was a men's night out, what would it occur? What would occur? Yeah. You'd have uh, pork and beans, Ooh. beer, and a fighting contest. <laughs> just, just Can you just turn me, off just, that? Just What's it supposed to be doing? <laughs> like, Jane, what am I supposed to be feeling? I mean, give me a break. They gave it to a lumberjack. I know who I am. <laughs> it was very, very revealing. Well, that's nice. Good for her. Is what are we going to talk I don't about know. tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow. And we're back. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 9.30 to 10. Be there, be square. What's up, Mike? How are you, bud? Good. How nice are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> we should do this. You know, not that we even got anywhere yet. But we should do this more often because, like, you, you have your rant, and I just have my insanity that is fed by whatever's happening in the moment. Oh, well, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. But I was thinking about this this morning. We were over at the airport restaurant, and we had breakfast, like I said, with 17 veterans, and um, I was thinking about this, and I'm thinking about this article saying, these guys saying that the American flag is disruptive. Yeah. And I looked around the table, and every single person at that table was wearing an American flag, and every single person at that table had gone to fight for what that American flag represents. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but my truck parked in the parking lot. If you look out the window, it's probably, I don't know if you have a flag on your car, your vehicle. My, my truck... Not, this is my second one since then, since 2001 has had a flag on it, okay? And like I'll drive to New Hampshire a lot, I'll drive to Maine, and at the toll, toll booths, you know, a lot of people will, you know, say, I really like your flag, you know, are you military? You know, I say, no, I'm not military, but I fly the flag as a, a representation of my ability to exercise free speech, 
because I'm in love with free speech. And yeah. You were talking in the first half of the show about free speech. So I choose to fly the flag as a symbol of my free speech. Access television. The ability to speak freely without commercial involvement pretty much staring the way you talk. Because if you said the things that you say on commercial television, there would be sponsors that pull. There would be people that say, I'm going to tell people not to do business with the people that are sponsoring you. And basically, they can steer what you say by the almighty dollar. And pretty much yeah. a lot of what you're talking about, I think, is being steered by what has taken over America, and that is the almighty dollar. The dollar has become God. The dollar is the ruler. Right. The, right the dollar is the ruler. Yeah. The media, the mainstream media, the network media, is just steers everybody whichever way you want to go. And the I grew up in Boston. I grew up in Dorchester. My father was a Boston firefighter. We grew up with the race riots of the late 60s. Um, we grew up with stories of them coming home and having, you know, telling stories of cinder blocks being tossed off the roof of projects. One day, a refrigerator thrown off the roof of a project trying to hit the fire truck. The hell are you going after firemen for? They're not doing anything bad. They're coming to help you. Yeah. You know, and now that got so much better and race relations just improved where not, yeah, you still get some knuckleheads that just want to say, oh, I'm not going over there. He's a Puerto Rican. He's a black. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. There's always going to be a jackass in the world. There's always going to be a knucklehead. Big deal. And I was thinking of this coming over, and I was like, how do I say this without sounding like an idiot? I'm like, I got friends that are colored people. Yeah. I got friends that are black. Yeah. I grew up with kids that are black. I got one of my best friends at work. I'd take a bullet for him. A Puerto Rican kid. He's, I'd do anything for the guy. Yeah. And it's like, I don't see him as a black guy. I don't see him as a Puerto Rican guy. I just see him as my friend. I think if left alone, you get, you know, like you, you go back to the busing. I remember going to, to Boston during the busing. My, uh, yeah. my best friend had a, <laughs> he had an uncle who was a, uh, he was the head bartender at the Naked Eye. But anyway, we used to go into Boston. We used to go into the North End. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know I got thrown we're, out we're, of there with my brother. You know, we're, we're basically kids. We're 18 years old. And I remember when busing first happened, you know, talk about racism, the signs as you came through the tunnel. It was horrible. It was awful. But left alone, when people get face to face, I think these things have the ability to work themselves out when you're sitting down or you're in a foxhole with someone of a different race and you realize that you're basically fighting for the same thing. You might be on different sides of the coin, but you're fighting for the same thing. You're fighting for, you're fighting for your family. You're fighting to have better lives for your children. When you realize that, I mean, you can connect at a better yeah, level. You're fighting it works to get the hell out, out of the foxhole. What's hole. screwing everything up? is these, excuse my language, if I may, I have freedom of speech, these goddamn pretty newscasters that are reading off a teleprompter and they're just sitting there in their perfect posture with their perfect complexions, reading whatever is being fed to them by the corporate puppeteers. But then does that go into it, like say we were talking about um, John Moynihan, who got shot in the face okay. last week, point blank. Police officers approaching their car, Nobody had their weapons drawn. This guy jumps out of the car, shoots him in the pow, face. Point blank, shoots him right in the face. Yeah. Did he shoot him because he was a white cop? Probably not. Yeah. I think he shot him just because he was a cop. He just shot him because when you read this guy's bio, when you read his backstory, the guy was just a whack job. But then you get the whole neighborhood now, whether it, it spirals because of, you know, everything that, that has happened in the past. So now it's Black Lives Matter. Okay, so now we're getting back into the whole racial thing. Why? Education. Why, Why does 
Do white lives matter? Does Puerto Ricans' lives matter? Do Chinese lives matter? Does a cop life matter? A fireman life matter? A train engineer's life matters? Why are we segregating it just to say a black life matters? And then when you're watching the videos, because everybody has their videos going now, it's just, I can see Martin Luther King rolling over in his grave and saying, what the hell? This isn't the way I left you people. What are you doing? Education, drugs, and then mob mentality. Uh, you figure mob mentality, mob is mentality huge. when you know a lot of these people in the lower socioeconomic classes. I hate to say it, what are they doing all day? They're watching TV, and they see this stuff, and it you know it's fueling them. So when anything happens, naturally the first thing they do is react, and they go out there. Uh, uh, you know, we had those unfortunate incidents where, you know, what, what was it, Trevor, Trevor Martin yeah, case? Trevor Martin, uh, yeah. The, the, you know, I feel bad for the guy to get strangled. Uh, yeah. I feel it, bad it, for him. Really do. I mean, he seemed to be just doing his yeah. own spot. And to me, the New York cops were way out of line. They I, killed him. I, I continually put myself in the, in the position of I have a special needs child, you know, who's an adult. But we're in a situation like that when they wouldn't understand where they said, freeze, get down on the ground. Conceivably, yeah. you know, a hoorah policeman could take him down and injure him. You know, but, but let's put that on the back burner. Um, yeah, it's the mob mentality. And I, you know, again, I'm going to blame the mainstream media for feeding it. And I'm also going to put blame to the leadership. I don't think the leadership is actually, you know, they talk about boots on the ground. When you got a, when you got leadership that's uh, dictating from, uh, you know, an elevated post versus yeah. like getting down there in the trenches with people and say, look, enough is enough. This is about, you know, getting you together with them. Let's work together this here. Is the about, country has problems. This is about the people. The country yeah. has big problems. Let's work this out together. And I think... Human beings are more than willing to get together. Yeah, but you got the political leaders that don't want to because one's Republican and yeah. one's Democrat, and so they can't get along. They just can't. If they both have the same great idea, neither one of them would be able to allow it. But the problem is we're going to be in a civil, law, a civil war, and it's going to be a shame if this country is going to get... The only thing that's going to really going to destroy this country is we're going to destroy it from the inside. We're going to destroy it from within. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a shame. Um, but I, I really think that we're heading down that road. It's, it's going to happen. And I, I fear that. You know, yeah. I, I hope, you know, I hope again that we can work things out. But, you know, I fear that. I see the, the whole divide and conquer going on. And again, I almost think as though this is by some people, you, some people yeah. call them the elite, yeah. that this might be planned uh, to gain more be. control of us. Okay, well, how are you going to gain more control over us? You have to create a situation where chaos starts, then you come in and you fix the chaos, but they fix the chaos, Mike, now you can't say this. Now you can't do that. Yeah. You have to be in bed by 12 o'clock. You can't watch the streets. You have Don't to wear your seatbelt. You do. can't ride in the back of a pickup <laughs> truck. You have to turn your headlights on now if your windshield wipers are on. What's next? I have to use one <laughs> ply toilet paper because they're telling me <laughs> I have to What's save the next world. next is the credits. Are you kidding Thanks me? Thanks for joining me. We're <laughs> done. <laughs> Just hey. get rolling. <laughs> Jack Telly, world famous, world renowned. Folks, I appreciate you joining us today on Cool Talk. When you see a veteran, say thank you for him. And please don't forget, every veteran is somebody's hero. Don't forget the vet. Semper Fi. See you next week. You just got the steam going, Mike. <laughs>